the time I was 20, I had a nervous breakdown. So I was sitting in the hospital. And while I was sitting in the hospital, my mind literally did this. It, it formed a square. And I saw my mind floating and going up like this. And I said, God, please don't let me lose my mind. And it stopped in a square. It just sat there for three days. So when the doctor would come in the room, everything in front of me was pure black. And I would have to see my life like this. So I think about people in the hospital when you see them rocking yeah. and looking to the side. Yeah. Looking kind of, I, I can kind of understand maybe what they're going through because my mind was sitting in a square over here. So the doctor came in and when the doctor came in, I was balled up in a corner crying. And I said, I'm ready to go home because I didn't want to stay there anymore. I said, I'm ready to go home. And he said, no, you're not. He said, you're not ready to go home because you threatened to kill yourself driving a car with your kids in the back. You wanted to run into a tree and kill all of you so you wouldn't have to leave your kids here with the people that hurt you. You're not ready to go home. I flipped out even more. So for three days, my mind sat in a square. After the third day, it snapped back into place. God gave me another chance. I got out of the hospital, started getting myself together. Uh, the person that I was with, uh, we hadn't been together for eight months. I was in my home one o'clock in the morning, and as I was laying on my couch, I saw. I woke up because I just felt something. I saw a shadow running through uh, my kid's room. Immediately, I called his name. I don't even know why. I just called his name, but there was no answer. I jumped up, and when I jumped up, I heard footsteps. I took off running. I ran down to my sister's apartment, and I heard footsteps running behind me one o'clock in the morning. Chased me all around her bed. I ran back out into the hallway, and I realized it was the person that I called. I didn't even realize I was at knife point until I was being raped upstairs on the living room floor by somebody who was secretly living in my attic for two months. You got to stop right there. Hold that thought, because I know somebody needs some water. Oh my God, somebody needs some coffee, tea or, or a glass of wine or something, girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, Michelle is going to share with us more of that story and then we're going to transition to when she